Piana, congratulations. So tell us what this feels like right now. What's going through your head? Um, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, it's such a great opportunity and chance. Oh, yeah. It's such a great opportunity and chance to be able to compete for the United States. Uh, this is our first ever medal in the women's hammer throw. So being able to bring home that medal for my country means everything. But like I always say, um, when I step in that ring, it's, it's not me, it's we. We did this together, you know. Um, I have such great friends. Like, I love both of them. So, <laughs> so to me, it, 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 it's a lot easier to compete against people who push you and to have such great individuals to compete against because uh, we support each other. We make each other better. That's why we did, we did so well because we're friends and we support each other. What did your big throw feel like? Uh, it felt really good. <laughs> uh, my throw felt, uh, I didn't think it was that far, but it went, so that was a good thing. Um, more to come, so I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I'll ask a question uh, to Miss 
uh, Zan, and I will come to uh, like the kind of translation if you can last the night uh, to our colleague. You have this uh, opportunity to uh, compete against uh, the best, and now you're part of our big family, as I see it here. You have very close bonds between you. Uh, what's your feeling about it? Uh,他就是世界纪录的台上,我们跟他们一起较量,然后现在呢,然后我们一起拿,感受怎么样子。Yes, indeed. It's just like a family. Because Africa is a very nice, very friendly. And we're so happy to compete uh, together. Yes, every time we compete, uh, I feel no uh, nervous because the environment is so excellent. So I love it. Thank you very much. Next question, Larry. Uh, Joanna. So, Poland has a pretty awesome tradition in the Anarcho, especially the women's Anarcho. What will this mean? So, what will they be writing about in the papers tomorrow in Poland about you know? Uh, yes, we have a tradition. We have a world record holder in Poland, Anita Zbordarczyk. Uh, she's the best one in Poland. And everyone would like to be like she. Because she's uh, only one woman in the world uh, which drew uh, 80 meters and more. Uh, in this year she's not competing here because she has a, a problem with her knee. Uh, but I think she's back strong in next year, so we have uh, more competing uh, together. And the point is uh, I do my history and I do my best uh, this time. If she came here, I think. I work for my bronze medal, but today I have silver. Thank you. Gentlemen back there. The yeah, answer. Let's keep it. Same team. Hey, Diana. <laughs> hey, Congratulations. Um, you know, hammer throwing in the US, I don't think I need to tell you, doesn't get a ton of air time. Um, did you, uh, why did you get into it? I mean, that, you know, it's not like it's not even contested at the same stadium as the rest. You know, just tell me about that whole dynamic and your wanting to change it. Um, I actually, I was a four sport athlete in high school, so I did softball, basketball, volleyball, track and field. When I started track and field, it was actually to run the 800, um, and I wanted to break my mother's record. I only weighed about 145 pounds uh, my freshman year in high school. Um, but luckily I held the home run record for Missouri, I think it was 14 home runs to 15 home runs in one season, batting average of 505. Um, had full ride, uh, full ride opportunities for softball, and then uh, I just did track and field to stay in shape. Um, and what was really amazing was um, after my freshman year, I met this amazing guy, his name uh, was Gary Cooper uh, in Missouri uh, for Troy Buchanan High. He was the assistant coach, and uh, he kept saying, come to my house, come to my house. I'm thinking, dude, I'm not coming to your house. That's weird. But uh, he's such a great guy because uh, I came over to his house, and we were all kind of learning fit together. Um, he handed, handed me this thing. I didn't know what it was. Like, what is a hammer? I am, I think, like 16 years old. I don't know what to do with this thing. And the first time I wound it around my head, I hit my head with a handle right on my forehead. And I remember literally dropping it and saying, I'm never doing this again. I, I was like, I'm not a world champion. And now I'm a world champion. <laughs> um, but uh, with much persistence, he kept at me and he kept saying, you know, keep going, keep working. Um, all together, since I did multiple sports, I had about three months of training from my freshman year to my senior year. And I decided to do track and field because uh, they took softball out of the Olympics that year. So I said, oh, you know, I haven't played softball since I was five years old. I'm going to get this track thing again. And, uh, you know, I ended up breaking the freshman record. Um, and then I ended up being two time NCAA champion. And then um, I 
didn't really sink in that I could compete at an international level until my first world team in 2015. And I remember actually sitting next to Anita, and I was like, oh my god, I'm sitting by someone who does 80 meters. <laughs> That's insane. But uh, <laughs> I remember like reaching over, and, like touching her leg, and then like, coming back, and I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> and she just kind of looked at me like I was a crazy person. And I was like, I just had to, because I never thought this opportunity and chance would come. And then now I'm throwing to 78 and 24, and uh, I just, it's been such a crazy journey. I, would, I never thought I'd be where I am today. And I'm hoping that with my story, that people can see that you don't have to start out being really young. You can start in high school, college, and you can be a world-class athlete as long as you put in the time and chance to do it, you know, you're going you're gonna to thrive. You know, stay away from drinking, drink plenty of water, get plenty of sleep. Um, if you want to do it, do it right, go the whole, put 100% into it, because uh, when you look back at your past, you're going to have regrets. That's my question. Coach, you talked about the importance of your coach. Um, when did you start training with her? And I believe she coaches some of the other coach as well, so do you have a pretty good sort of training group as well? How does that help you? My coach Molina is my best friend. Uh, we met uh, a lot of years uh, ago, I think uh, maybe 15. Uh, I decided after going to games in Rio to change coach because I do with another one and I changed the group I back to my family sites. Uh, and my teammate who is uh, watching Kovisky, the world leader uh, in Hammer Trotu. So we have a great team, we have a great team spirit uh, already and that's work uh, in our team. My coach uh, do for me the uh, plan for work, but she believed me and I believe for her, for her mind and thinking about the coaching. So I think that's the most important thing to believe the coach and the coach believe to you and have a good group for work like me and Wojciech and our physio, our committee and all guys who help us for working. Thank you. Please take uh, a couple of more questions. Uh, this is for, uh, for Zane. One of the big stories the last decade for China has been your technical event growth. The hammer growth, the discus, the shot. Tell us about how you got involved in the hammer growth. Yeah. <laughs> One of the elements for me to 
to uh, stick to the answer is to compete with such kind of girls. I like them so much because every time, uh, yeah, yeah, they have to, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy to compete with them. So every time I'm eager to compete with them. So that is a really uh, wonderful aim for me to stick to the answer. Thank you. I think we'll get one last question because the ladies need to rest a bit. Two last questions then. I'll be really quick. Thanks, man. Um, you're pretty overcome with emotion, Diana, when, when the moment you, you realized you were a world champion. What, what, what were you feeling in that moment that really just kind of overtook you and you started to flow? What, what did it feel like? Um, for me, it was... I, I can't even really explain it. Um, because like I said, earlier this year, I didn't even think I was going to be able to compete. I thought that I was going to stop. Um, I was not about to come and only throw 66 meters, 67 meters. Um, at the beginning of the year, I was going 60, I mean 76, 77 meters. I was going great, and in about four weeks, all my numbers dropped about 40 to 50 feet. And um, all I remember is me and my coach were looking at each other thinking, what just happened? What is happening? And, you know, I felt like I had a harness on, and um, I remember we were like, "Well, do we keep going, or do we, you know, pack up and get ready for Tokyo 2020, or or do we retire?" Because I I do not want to be that person who just takes opportunities and chance away from other great athletes. And so um, I remember it was a lot of crying and a lot of pain, but fortunately I met an individual, his name is Brian Murr, um, and he straightened me out, fixed me up, basically he said he put me back together with duct tape and mailing wire, so um, honestly I have two weeks off, I'm going straight to Indiana and going to be working with him just to kind of make sure everything is good and right, and honestly at that moment, knowing that you know season was done, I'm coming away as a world championship, it was more of thankful tears of support that I get from so many different people and to compete against such great individuals. So for me, like I say, um, whatever I compete, when I throw, it's never me, it's me. One last question. Yeah, you're a world champion and your life just changed. Thank you. In what ways, <laughs> how do you think it's changed? In what ways do it's changed? How do you see it in your future? And how will you take advantage of the platform that this wonderful achievement has given you? I hope I don't change. God, I hope I don't change. I hope that I always want hugs, that I always am nice. And if I'm ever mean and rude, please, someone just smack me. Because I don't, if not, yeah, you, you, you kick my butt, please. Because <laughs> uh, I hope that I never change. I hope that, you know, like my, like my husband always says, he's like, like a child, you know, you have this big heart, and he's like, you're sweet, and you're kind, because you compete hellish, and you're crazy, but he's like, but you have a good heart. So for me, um, I am the way I am because of who I surround myself with. Like I say, you know, negative people um, don't have a part of my life because I don't let it. I surround myself with such great, wonderful people, and I couldn't be more thankful for the people who I let into my life, you know. Um, when you have a negative person in your life, it, it drains you. It makes you exhausted and tired. So, you know, I always say I appreciate you, but I have to move on. It's time to be better. It's time to grow. And, you know, I try my best to help anyone that I can. Um, what I'm hoping to do is to show um, for the platform is um, basically that uh, women can be strong and beautiful. You can have the best of both worlds. Like I've always said, that uh, you know, I've, I've been small and I've been bigger. I've had both sides, and but you don't really get to accept yourself. Like other people can't accept you until you accept yourself and to love yourself. And that's the hardest challenge: is to look in the mirror and say, you know, hey, you're awesome today. And you, you know, make someone else happy. <laughs> I do, I talk a lot. Okay, that would be all I, I need. I talk so much. The ladies, the ladies, the <laughs>
hunter kind of very nice results. So I think that we're going to this city for until the next medals. So let's get one last uh, photo for all of you. The three groups together before the ceremony tomorrow. Yeah, I'm gone. <laughs> That's a okay.